What's up Elena friends, it's Yanis here and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be explaining the differences between a regression model, a classification model, a clustering model and a time series model, which all fall under the machine learning umbrella. I will also be showing you some practical examples with models and code into Python just to help you gain a better understanding of what these models are and how they work. And before we jump into this video, if you're passionate about data science, then please click the like button, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications for my future videos. Right, just to give you a quick overview now, a regression model is when we know our X, we know our Y and we're trying to predict a number. A classification model is when we know our X, we know our Y and we're trying to predict a class. Clustering is when we know our Xs but we don't have a Y and we're trying to identify groups of data with similar characteristics. And time series model is when we know our X, we know our Y, however, our X is always going to be a time series. So a date or a month or a week, so something that is changing based on time. And also we can only have two variables, X and Y, in order to run time series modeling. And our aim is to forecast and predict the future values of the time series variable. Right, and just to give you a bit more information about how these models work, if we go back to regression, Imagine that you're the data scientist and the business gives you these raw data. So the day name, the visitors, the marketing spend, the promo and the revenue. And they ask you to predict the revenue based on this data. So we actually have our X's and our Y. We know the revenue we're trying to predict. We run our regression. So our line of best fit based on these variables and we create this function of f that predicts revenue. So as you can see in our first prediction, the actuals were $465, but we actually predicted $480. So we created this model that it takes for inputs these x's and it gives you a prediction based on those x's. And that prediction is always going to be a number. And if we go into Python now, just to show you a practical example here, I have this in a YouTube video too. So every model I'm gonna show, I actually have it on a YouTube video. So here we have this example that we take this raw data, we go through the data pre-processing phase. So we clean the data, we transform the data, we add new columns or we remove columns, we visualize the data and then we get the data ready in order to feed it into our machine learning model, which is down here, I think, there we go. Here is where we feed our model with the raw data and this is how we evaluate our regression model. So we use metrics like the R square or the accuracy, the mean square error and the mean absolute error in order to evaluate our model. Right, moving on, we have our classification example. So let's say the business provides the data scientists with this raw data, account savings, employment history, age, job and good loan. Then we need to break this down into X's and Y. So we're going to use these variables, these four variables in order to predict our Y, whether it's going to be a good loan or not. The data scientist is going to create the model and is going to create this function of F that takes these variables and makes a prediction. So you can see the first prediction, we got it correct, 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 and this one is not correct. So our aim when it comes to classification models is to predict a class, a yes or a no. And some popular algos when it comes to classification is logistic regression, decision trees, random forest, KNRS neighbors, support vector machine, knife base, XGBoost, and neural nets. Just to show you practical examples now, if we go into Python, 
Here we have a logistic regression example. So we start with the raw data and we're trying to predict whether it's going to be a good loan or not. So we go through the data pre-processing phase where we clean the data, we transform the data and we get it ready in order to feed it into our logistic regression model, which is down here. And then we evaluate our model. So we use evaluation metrics like the accuracy or the confusion matrix or the sensitivity or true positive rate, the precision, the false positive rate, the false negative rate, and also the logarithmic loss, which is extremely important when it comes to classification models. Down here, we also do some hybrid parameter tuning, and at the end, we make our prediction, which is a class. Again, we are predicting classes in classification. I also have another example of classification models. So here we run decision trees, random forest and XG boost. So we start with our raw data, we clean it, we transform it, we get it ready to feed it into our models. And then at the end, we test our models on new and seen data. And just to explain this new and seen data, when the data scientist creates this model, Yes, we know the why before we create the model, but the idea is that when new data comes in for new customers and we are not going to know the why, so we are not going to know if the loan we're going to give them is going to be a good one or not, we can use the historic data, which is this model we created over here, to make predictions about the new data. So this is how machine learning works. Right, moving on, we have unsupervised learning. So this is where we don't have a Y. So this raw data is age, gender, postcode, status, household income, event attendance, social media, hours willing to travel, and adrenaline rush activities. So this is survey data. We don't have a Y, so we are not trying to predict anything. We feed this data into our unsupervised machine learning model and the model tries to cluster the data, so groups them together based on their characteristics. So if the data points behave the same, then this model is actually going to cluster them together. So we can see cluster three on these two points. So these two data points actually behave the same, not in just these three columns, but in all the data sets. And just to show you a practical example into Python now, if we go over here, this is an example I have where I use this raw data, again, survey raw data, in order to cluster my data points together. So we go through the data pre-processing phase. Again, we clean the data, we transform the data, and we get it ready in order to run k-means clustering. So I'm trying to cluster the data together. And this is where I visualize my data after I've clustered them using two principal components. So if you watch the video, you're going to understand what this PCA is. So what we can see here is that the yellows behave similarly. These greens over here behave similarly. These black ones behave similarly, the reds and the blues. I also show some ways of trying to improve our unsupervised machine learning model and at the end we create our final clusters and we output the data into SQL. Right, and the last model we have is a time series model. So here we have our raw data X and Y. So in order to run time series models, you need to make sure that you have a time series data set. So something that shows change over a sequence of time, whether it's dates, weeks, months, years, or something that signifies time series. And you also need to have two variables only, X and Y. So your time series date or your X, and then your Y, which is the value you're trying to predict. And the idea is that you feed the model this x and then it creates a function of x which predicts your y variable so you can see our predictions over here and the way it works into machine learning is that you feed the model these actuals so the blue line 
then you make a prediction based on unseen data for the model. So these blue actuals over here, and then your prediction is going to be the red dotted line. Then you evaluate your model. So you can do hybrid parameter tuning in order to make sure you minimize the loss. And then you run your forecast for the future where the model hasn't seen any of this data and you also don't have any of the Y values in order to double check your model. And just to show you an example into Python, if we go here at the top, here I run an ARIMA model, an auto ARIMA model, a profit and a linear regression, I think, but linear regression is not time series. So we have this raw data over here and I actually edit the data in order to have only two columns. So you can see time and value by country. I create a for loop that goes by country because I am only allowed to have X and Y. So if you come down here, what I'm feeding this data is only X and Y. It's only the time and the value by country. So if you watch the whole tutorial, you can see that each country, so if we keep scrolling, I think each country is going to have about four different models and their evaluations. So I think it's down here. There you go. So you can see Australia, Cyprus, Greece, and the predictions, and then all countries, I think, are run at the end. Right, so going back here, this is the end of this tutorial and I hope you've gained a very good understanding of the differences between regression, classification, clustering and time series. If you feel you've got enough value out of this video, then I would really appreciate it if you click the like button, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications for my future videos. Thank you very much for watching this video.